Hey guys, hey, it's Robin the Lady Biker. How is everyone doing today? Well, I'm back here on the back end of Scarlet today because I have been hearing a vibration at certain RPMs and I was trying to figure out what it was. Was there something loose or was there something broken? Anyway, just trying to figure that out. And it got me to thinking and wondering, how many of us out there that are riders wrench on our own bikes? Huh, let's talk about it. All right, hey guys. So to kind of touch base with, I figured out, cause I was hearing a rattle. What I figured out is this rubber grommet right here at the very back where the the mount for the back part of my tailpipe attaches to the saddlebag, the rubber grommet part is loose. Scarlet's coming up on 30,000 miles here. In fact, I think I'm like 800 miles short of that. I've got to get her uh, service scheduled. And between those two things with me digging around to figure out what the rattle was, knowing that she's due for a significant service and kind of knowing where my limitations are, but it got me to, to wondering I know what I'm comfortable with, but I wanted to have that conversation with you about how many of us actually do the wrenching on our own bikes. Now, in the three years that I've been a part of the motorcycle community, and even prior to that, whenever I was riding passenger with my dad, I discovered that there's really three general types of riders. So the first rider is the most brave in my opinion, but they're the ones that are like, I don't need a mechanic, I'm my own mechanic. <laughs> now these are the people that it doesn't matter how big, how small the job is, they're gonna dive in, they're gonna tackle it, they're gonna figure out what's going on with their own bike. Uh, some of these people are even the ones that I have heard them say that their bike, it was a basket bike, meaning their entire bike came in a basket or in a box and they had to do all the, the mechanics to, build their own bike. Um, a lot will do a lot of very detailed customization. These are the, some of the people that whether they're a mechanic by trade or just a shade tree mechanic are very, very brave to just dive in. And if they break stuff, okay, they break it, they figure it out and they repair it or they replace it and they move on. Um, and actually guys, any of you out there who know how to easily replace that or to somehow wedge it, I would very much appreciate you dropping down the comments and telling me if there's a quick and easy fix rather than replacing the whole rubber gasket. All right, sorry guys, I uh, had an Amazon delivery, had to take a moment to say thank you. So anyway, we talked about the first bracket, which are those that do all their own mechanic work. They do all their own wrenching, everything. Then the next block of people that I've noticed are the opposite of the spectrum. Whether a lack of desire, a lack of knowledge, or a lack of just where they live having the ability, there are those that if anything goes wrong, any repairs, any maintenance, anything whatsoever, their first call is to their mechanic. And you know what, that is a good place to be. <laughs> because our individual experiences as riders is as unique as each of us are, is as unique as each of our bikes. So, you know, if someone doesn't want to wrench on their own bike, that is cool too. The challenge in that bracket especially is having a mechanic you know you can trust. So if you land in that bracket, tell me, how did you find your mechanic? And, you know, because, it's good mechanics, ones that you know you can trust, especially for us women, are hard to find. So the last bracket is the one I tend to fall into, which is I want to understand as much as I can within my skill set, whatever that current level is, about my bike, and then I also want to learn. So I know my limitations. I mean, I can do a simple oil change. I can do simple modifications, like when I did, um, the change out of my headlights and my um, taillights into LEDs. Those were some simple or more straightforward modifications that I knew I could do, so I did them. However, 
needing to have Scarlett's 30,000 miles service done, especially when her 25 wasn't a complete one because we were on the road, I'm taking that into mechanic. And I'm lucky that I have, in two different locations, I have two different shops with great mechanics that I trust. And I've made friends with both of the shop managers. So anytime I come in, they make sure to give me one of the like top master technicians or master mechanics in the shop. So in this case, it's not so much what I know, it's who I know. <laughs> but that's, I find, where a large percentage of us land is kind of in that middle where we're willing to do a lot of the things, but we also know where our limitations are. And we take our, our bikes in whenever we hit the end of what we can do. So guys, that's, I know this is a rather, rather short video today, but that's okay. So for those of you who are, who have watched and I appreciate your time so much. Those of you who watch, especially to the end of my videos, you have no idea how much I appreciate the time that you invest to watch these. So I have a question for you. One, which bracket do you fall into? Are you the, I don't need a mechanic. Are you the, if anything's going wrong, I'm calling mechanic first thing. Or do you fall in that middle bracket or that middle group of, I wanna know my bike, but I know my limitations too. So where do you fall in each of those? If you use a mechanic and you have a good one, how did you find them? So anyway, guys, that's going to be about it for this one. Um, when this goes up, it should be a Friday, and I am so looking forward to getting out, getting in a short ride this weekend, and then got another video coming up soon. We've got a couple more plans, that last-minute plans we've plopped in for this winter, or this, uh, this fall. So I'll share those with you all in another video. So until then, guys, get out and ride. Have fun, be safe, and I'm going to catch you all in the next video. Bye.